This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning. Thanks for getting up with us on this Saturday morning. I'm Tim Gordon. This morning on Sunrise, accused of luring a woman under false pretenses. What court records re reveal about an artist and acupuncturist now charged with rape. Plus, starting next month, you won't have to wear a face mask in healthcare facilities. Maybe. Oregon and Washington plan to lift those mandates, but some facilities can still require them. But before we get to all that, let's check in with Chris McGinnis for a quick look at our Saturday forecast. Good morning. Good morning again, Tim. We yeah. are uh, still watching for the potential <laughs> of low elevation snow. And if you're just waking up and saying, OK, what about that snow? Well, let me show you radar right now. Uh, radar indicating at least in the highest parts of Portland, you know, up around a thousand feet that we could have some snowflakes mixed in with the raindrops. And over the last three hours here, you can see the progress this moisture has made. It's certainly uh, radar has certainly filled in uh, in the wee hours of this morning. It is snowing in the coast range at elevations generally around a thousand feet or so. And we'll start to see the snow overspreading the Cascades as well over the next little while. So again, if you went to bed last night wondering if we were going to see snow, here are the latest details. There remains a winter weather advisory for the Portland Vancouver metro area for elevations at 700 feet and above for the possibility of some sticking snow this morning. I can tell you right now that that snow level, at least at this point, is up around probably a thousand feet. In case in point, here's a live look from the uh, ODOT camera on the Sylvan Hill. This is at 750 feet. Uh, just wet roads out there. No snowflakes showing up just yet. All right, right now at PDX, we are currently 41 degrees with light rain and an east southeast breeze at three. By the way, the dew point also well above freezing. And what that tells me is that no matter how heavy the precipitation gets this morning, we're just not going to have to worry about accumulating snow on the valley floor. That's just not going to happen on the valley floor anyway. 42 right now in Tigard, 41 in Westland. We slip south into the Lyman Valley. We're in the mid 40s now in Salem, 45, 44 at Kaiser. The plan for today rain and again as you get up above 500 feet we could probably mix some snowflakes in with the rain when you get up above about 750 to a thousand feet that's when the snowflakes will become the predominant precipitation type here mid-morning so folks up along skyline boulevard and up in the west hills you have still a slight potential to see some light accumulating uh, light accumulating snow today as we go towards midday temperatures in the mid 40s here in portland uh rain showers in our forecast today we'll walk you through the rest of the weekend and the week ahead in just a few minutes, Tim. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. And happening now and for the entire weekend, a traffic alert for anyone who uses the Morrison Bridge. The bridge shut down last night and it's going to remain closed now to cars, bikes and pedestrians. That's until five o'clock Friday, uh, Monday morning. Sorry, this is all part of the Morrison Bridge paint project that we talked about last month. It's in its wrap up now and will be this fall. And we're going to start this half hour with uh, disturbing allegations against a Portland man. He's accused of raping a woman after luring her to his home. Authorities say with the false promise of a job as a model. Our Catherine Cook explains why police think there could be other victims. Take a look at this photo from Portland Police. His name is Gabriel Weiss and he's 49 years old. On Friday, U.S. Marshals arrested Weiss in southeast Portland on charges of rape and sodomy in the first degree. Court documents say Weiss lives here near Southeast 2nd and Taylor. The charges go back to August of 2018. That's when police say Weiss allegedly lured a 19-year-old woman into his home with the promise of a modeling job. But once inside his studio, police say Weiss allegedly bound the woman and assaulted her. Investigators say information they found shows Weiss may have sexually assaulted other victims who may not have filed police reports. It's why they want everyone to know about Weiss and his background. As an artist, police say he used the pseudonyms Kauri Kaskeball and Gabe Kauri. Police say most recently Weiss practiced acupuncture. He worked here at Clinic 11 on Northwest 3rd in Old Town. With Weiss behind bars, no one answered the phone when we called. This is Dr. Gabriel Weiss at Clinic 11. If this is a medical emergency, please hang up and dial 911. Here's more info about Weiss. Police say he used to operate the now shuttered Bamboo Grove Salon. It was a tea house and event space on the central east side. Also, between 2002 and 2012, Weiss was a student at the National University of Natural Medicine in Portland. A school representative tells KGW Weiss was also a classroom aide, but never a faculty member. The school says they didn't keep in touch with Weiss after 2012. 
Catherine Cook reporting there and police in the Multnomah County DA's office are asking anyone with information about Weiss to share it with investigators. Now we posted more information on how to do that in our story at KGW.com. Well, Oregon City detectives need your help finding a suspected ATM skimmer. Officers say they believe this man, they believe, placed a credit card skimmer along with a camera back on February 25th on a machine at the Oregonians Credit Union. Police say they're, quote, cautiously optimistic the suspect didn't successfully skim anyone's details and no victims have come forward. Anyone who recognizes that man has to call Oregon City Police. Well, in just one month, both Oregon and Washington will no longer require people to wear masks in healthcare settings, but it doesn't necessarily mean you won't have to wear a mask at the doctor or dentist's office. Individual providers will still have the right to require mask wearing by staff and patients in their facilities. The announcements from both states came out Friday, citing cases of flu and RSV dropping off and the all important COVID case numbers continuing to trend downward. Of course, there is still disease out there and higher risk for the chronically ill or those with compromised immune systems. So while many folks may be applauding the prospect of losing the mask, Oregon's health officer says they did not make this decision lightly. For many, um, they're greeting this announcement with happiness, um, that this is a, a great positive step as we move on um, from COVID-19. For others, particularly those with chronic conditions or who are immunocompromised, um, they're facing this decision with some anxiety. At this point, it is unclear what healthcare providers will do after April 3rd. We expect the major providers to make their announcements over the next month of their plans, and it may be facility by facility decisions on whether to keep a mask requirement in place or not. Well, Washington is making significant progress working through the state's rape kit backlog. The Attorney General's Office and State Patrol have been trying to clear more than 10,000 of them. They now expect the backlog to be taken care of by the end of the year. That includes the case of a Spokane man accused of murdering a woman in California more than 40 years ago. Howard Harold Carpenter was arrested after investigators found a DNA match from a recently tested rape kit in Washington. That DNA is now going into a database that law enforcement agencies in Washington State, but around the country as well, can seek matches for unsolved crimes. And that's exactly what happened in this case. Yeah, in this case, the untested rape kit had been sitting on a shelf since 1994. Washington changed its policies last year. Now, any new kit that comes in must be tested within 45 days. Okay, still to come on Sunrise, bringing new life to Portland's Old Town. We'll hear from the restaurant owner who's opening a second location in Portland's struggling downtown core.